During the age of exploration, there was a race between European countries to find new and exotic countries and good. Such country was Portugal. Under the rule of King Manuel I of Portugal, an explorer named Vasco da Gama hoped to find India, other than trekking across the entire Asian continent. His method using the Indian Ocean. Vasco da Gama was born in a noble family in Sins, Portugal, 1469. Being a son of a town governor, he was educated as a noble man and served un under the court of King Chao II. His dad was also the an eighth great explorer. Vasco da Gama was a brave and good leader. As a child, he was the town's governor's son and was educated as a nobleman, which meant that he received the highest level of location during those times. Previously, his father was given the assignment of trying to find the route to India through Africa. Unfortunately, he died a few weeks after he was given the assignment. Next, King Emmanuel then asked Paulo de Gama, Vasco's brother, to try it, but Paulo refused. Now King Emmanuel was starting to get anxious since Christopher Columbus had already found the new world for Spain. So, he asked Vasco da Gama to undertake the mission. He was asked because of his previous experience in the field as a naval officer. He had fought in the wars against Castile, defending Portuguese colonies from the French on the coast of Guinea. Many other European explorers of the time believed that the Indian Ocean was not connected to any other countries or oceans. However, uh, Vasco da Gama, along with his patron, King Manuel I of Portugal, were convinced that the Indian Ocean led to India. And so on July 8, 1497, five years after Christopher Columbus's famous voyage, Vasco da Gama set off from Lipset, Portugal. Several months later, Vasco da Gama landed to his first stop, Africa's Cape of Good Hope. He arrived on November 22nd. After staying for only a short period of time, he continued on to India. Along the way, he met many other smaller stops. Unfortunately, he was hindered by the presence of many Muslim traders who did not want to share the profitable trade with the Europeans. Finally, on May 20th, 1498, he arrived at India. He had proved all those European explorers wrong. The Indian Ocean indeed did lead to India. Thanks to Vasco da Gama, the people of Europe now had a new trading route to travel on from Europe to India. This allowed many more traders to arrive to India and the availability of exotic goods to increase. At first, the Indians were pleased and surprised to see Vasco da Gama and his men there at their port where no Europeans had ever been before. Most of the other traders came by land. They eagerly traded goods and exchanged pleasing talk. But then, the Indians demanded that he should pay a large tax and leave all the trading goods behind. In anger and rage, he took the goods with him, along with several Indian hostages, whom he hoped to use as servants or slaves. Da Gama faced many hardships while traveling back to Europe. Along the way, many of his sailors died from scurvy, aka lack of the appropriate amount of vitamin C. Ironically, he returned in September 1499 and was treated as a hero and rewarded by the king. There are no recollections on whatever happened to the Indian hostages. They most likely died on the trip or were sold into slavery, possibly the first act of a growing slave trade. Several years later, King Manuel I of Portugal once again sent Vasco da Gama, now in high-ranking admiral, to India. On October 30th, 8, 1502, he set off from Calcutta to India. From 1502 to 1503, the Gama went to India not really as a trade road, but more like a conquest. He took 20 armed ships since he thought that the Muslim traders would give him trouble again. One would hope that he wouldn't have used to use it. However, the Gama brought 20 armed ships with his intention to force his way into the profitable market and getting revenge on the Muslim traders who caused him so much trouble. He killed hundreds of Muslims, often brutal and painfully, to demonstrate his power. For example, the Gama waited for a ship to return from Mecca, a Muslim trading religious center. They overtook the ship and took everything on it. To make the matter worse, they took 350 passengers on the ship and then set it on fire, left the Muslim to die. It took four days for Muslim to slowly die, killing other men, women, and children. By ruthlessly murdering and attacking the people of the Muslim and Indian ports, the Gama and his crew were able to brutally control the people of the ports, making Portugal the head traders of the Muslims and Indians. He returned to Portugal in February of 1503. Once again, the king held him as a hero and made him a count of the court. 
Years later, in 1519, Vasco da Gama asked to be the viceroy in India. Viceroy means a representative of a certain country. He died in India on December 24, 1524, of an illness. Despite many of his rather evil and brutal ways, Vasco da Gama set a stage for an important revolution in Turin. By fighting the rogue throw cap of good hope to India, he did several things. One, the Gama was now officially brought Europe out of the Middle Ages. The wealth that European got from his, this new trade road increased profits in countries at much as 3,000%. Also, Europeans are said to India now ended the Muslim Empire, cut off their main source of wealth. The Muslim Empire sank into economic depressions and began still ongoing poverty of the Islamic people. Thanks to Vasco da Gama, Europe opened up a new trade route and brought wealth to Europe. However, thanks to Vasco da Gama, hundreds of innocent Indians and Muslims died under the bloody hands of the Portuguese sailor. Thanks to Vasco da Gama, the Muslims never again gained the wealth that they had and grew a healthy respect for all things European.